So the Cleveland Cavaliers have been in the news a little bit, as number one, their players apparently hate their coach, but two, they have said that they are open to moving Kevin Love. Now, um, I don't know if that means they're actively shopping him, I don't know if that means we can guarantee he's going to get moved, but it seems like there's a possibility, right? Personally, I think the idea of keeping him and having him be like a veteran who can help Garland and Sexton was an idea, but, you know, they're 5 and 16, and, uh, you know, I, I get it. You get some stuff back for him, all that stuff. Now, of course, with Love, we got to talk about his injury history, his contract, and the potential of him not being great defensively, although I'll get into that in a second here. So, first question before I start spitballing on teams is what is Kevin Love really worth? I mean, I guess it depends for one how good you think he really can be, and I mean, that's going to depend on the team he falls on. I mean, if he's on a team with a lot of ball handlers who he can run screens with and he can be shooting a lot of threes, attacking mismatches on the post, and doing some things off the dribble, I mean, Kevin Love, you know, he can make some things happen, like if you trap the screener that, you know, he screens for and stuff. He's also still a really good passer. I know it's been a while because Cleveland, uh, you know, with LeBron, he was not going to be able to be a passer. And this season, it hasn't been as much of a thing. But I do think if you get him the ball in the low post or the middle of the floor and you start having dudes cutting around him and stuff, that he can deliver some good plays. In terms of Love's defense, I mean, I don't know. I've, the past couple of years, I've become a little less fearful of teams getting destroyed because of one dude defensively especially if he goes to a smart team that's got a good defensive center or just a good defensive culture you know what I mean and even if they don't have a great defensive system I mean I don't know there's got to be some wing player you can put Kevin Love on and most of the time it's not going to be horrible I mean even if you're putting like a 6-7 dude on the other team's power forward, I feel like most of the time you're not going to get killed for that. Some teams definitely will kill you, but, you know, it depends on the personnel, team he ends up on, all that stuff. But anyway, what would he be worth? I mean, I think it really depends on the team. I don't think you're going to get a lottery pick for him. So anyway, let's dive into this. You know, the first one that I at least had a thought about, if we're starting with the Eastern Conference, because I always start with the East for some reason, is it was actually Miami. Um, I think the fit would make sense. The contracts would basically be James Johnson and Myers Leonard. That would allow Cleveland to get out of Kevin Love's money in two years, but neither one of those guys are really uh, high potential dudes. And in terms of draft picks, I don't think Miami could even trade this one right now because of the whole protections. So yeah, uh, moving on, still in the Eastern Conference. Would it be insane to say the Brooklyn Nets? Probably, because I think they want to hold up the, like, switchy athletic team thing, which Kevin Love does not totally help you with, even if I don't think he would destroy their defense. And then, you know, the idea would be next season, Kyrie, KD, Kevin Love. But, yeah. Orlando would certainly love to have Kevin Love's shot making. He would be their best offensive player, if you ask me. I also... I'm not the biggest fan of Vucevic, as you may remember, but the problem with this for the Magic is this would be making them a bit older. I mean, if you were going to swap out, I mean, you know, basically Aaron Gordon and then like Aminu's contract or something with the idea for Cleveland being, yeah, the money isn't necessarily better, but we just get Aaron Gordon. But um, that would, uh, Kevin Love's 31, you know, so there you go. That's the potential thing against it. And I don't really know if there'd be another reason for Orlando to do that move, you know. The Charlotte Hornets already have a few nice forwards between PJ and Miles. But I guess if they wanted to jumpstart it a little bit, they could do Batum's contract and then, uh, like, Malik Monk to make the money work. And then you just have Kevin Love to... I don't know if Charlotte didn't want to bottom out, I guess. Which we could argue would not be the right move, um, bottoming out or potentially not bottoming out because it doesn't always work. And as far as the rest of the East is concerned, I don't really see anything happening. I mean, yeah. Anyway, moving on to the Western Conference. I have seen the Phoenix Suns suggested on the interwebs for Kevin Love. 
Okay, so while I just said everything I said earlier about defense and stuff, I would be a little scared if my front court was DeAndre Ayton and Kevin Love, because while Aaron Baines is great, I don't think he's going to fix everything. As far as how the money would work, I guess it's Tyler Johnson, and then you're deciding between Frank Kaminsky, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, Dario Saric, that sort of thing. I don't know. Maybe you think Kevin Love on Phoenix would be amazing. I I mean, I get it. They could certainly be a pretty wild offensive team. Of course, the Blazers are always talked about when it comes to uh, Kevin Love or whoever. I don't really know how you make the money work unless you just want to get off Whiteside. Because, you know, Bazemore is ni- at 19, but then you still got to make up $10 million to get to Kevin Love's salary. And I don't think it's really here. And I'm definitely not giving up CJ for Kevin Love, so... Maybe Whiteside's out, but then I'll just say what I keep on saying, which is, who's the next center, you know? You can tell me everything you want about how Whiteside is empty box score stats and bad attitude and all that. Who's the backup center? And then between Sacktown, the Grizz, the Pelicans, and the Warriors, I don't really see it. So, yeah. I don't think every single team in the league could use Kevin Love Now, I'm sure there'd be rumors that I have not thought of, but yeah, I don't know. There's not a super lot of teams jumping out at me, but you know, I think if Kevin Love is available, there could definitely be something. I guess another thing to talk about is like, what would Cleveland really want? Not what they would get, which, you know, I already talked about, but like, would they want one legit young player who could be something? Because... I don't know, man. I feel like you're not going to get both for Kevin Love. I really don't think you're going to get a first that you feel good about and a young player where you're really excited about that guy. Like, you know, I mentioned Malik Monk earlier. I feel like it had to be one of those guys. Malik Monk, Dario Saric, just a young dude who's been around a little bit and hasn't really taken off, but they could if you put him in the right thing. So, yeah. Now, there is one more move that I have not thought of. I saw this on the internet. And I figure, why not? So, it's back to the Blazers, okay? The Blazers, of course, season's not going great. They finally have cap space this offseason, but there is a chance that they could view a midseason acquisition as effectively their free agent move, which, you know, Kevin Love is moving in this move. But anyway, the deal would be Hassan Whiteside and Kent Bazemore for Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love. With the idea of you might be able to kind of jumpstart the season a bit because Tristan Thompson has been kind of really good. And there's a chance that he would just invigorate the team in a way that Whiteside kind of hasn't. I don't know. It's, you know, it's it's that's a swing for the fences kind of a move, so... Yeah. Now, as far as this season is concerned, I mean, Kevin Love and Mello together, not exactly uh, an inviting uh, defensive forward combination. But I don't know. The Blazers are like whatever they are. They're like five or six games under 500. Eh, you know, whatever. If you make me say, I don't really think that move would, uh, would happen. I guess because I'm probably not going to do another video on the Cavs, unless Kevin Love gets moved, of course. I might as well just talk about, like, the team itself a little bit. I don't think there's too much to really discuss besides Garland and Sexton. Garland continues to be... bad. At the same time, you could argue he's gotten a little better throughout the season, just kind of adjusting to the NBA game. I think it's more of that than anything with him right now. As far as uh, Sexton is concerned... He continues to look like a pretty good scorer. I do wonder if this Cleveland team is going to kind of have to do what Phoenix did, where you just sign Rubio. Just get yourself a pretty good point guard to just kind of stabilize everything and and all that. But we're going to have to see if Garland is uh, is good first. So who knows when that type of thing will happen, but... Yeah, again with Kevin Love, I mean, I think he is uh, good. I think offensively he could still give you quite a bit. Shooting, posting up, maybe not posting up on bigs all the time, but, you know, switches, that type of thing. Playmaking, and then depending on the team, he could still hold up for you defensively. So he could be an asset. 
Maybe the market won't be too big for him. Don't know. 